Hello, welcome to Startup to Success with Maria. My guest today is Marcy Klein, who is the CEO and Emmy-winning TV director at Klein Creative Media. She tells stories with video stills and drones that create an impact while promoting brand recognition. She is also a best-selling author in the collaborative book, Women in Business Leading the Way and Women in Business, The Journey, A Surfer and a Pilot. Marcy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh my goodness, you are such an inspiration. I I can't thank you enough for making time out of your busy schedule to come and interview with me and help me with some of my personal company questions and issues that I have with video marketing. So I'm I'm going to have so many questions for you. But before we jump in and talk about uh, client creative media and all this amazing work that you've done in the past as well, Emmy winning TV director. Wow, that's incredible. I want to know what inspired you to start your career in TV. Oh, well, that's funny. Um, you know, I just fell into television. I had no idea it was going to be my my. Um, my lifelong journey. So I started as a student at UC San Diego and I came in undeclared. And I went through the class syllabus to find out what was the least amount of coursework so I could spend the most amount of time on the beach in <laughs> beautiful San Diego and learn how to surf. And turns out it was communications. So I signed up and became a communications major and they required you to take this class called Visual Arts 70 in which you um, learn how television works and how a, a video camera works. And back then the video cameras were very different than they are now. They were in these big giant, they were two pieces. The audio was, it was very, very different. But um, I fell in love with playing with the camera equipment. I was super bossy. I wanted to tell everybody where to be and what to do and how to make the video. So I realized that I was becoming a director and I didn't even know it. Um, and that's really how I fell into it. And then um, after, during, um, during college, I did a lot of projects where, um, well, there was a, like I did all my projects that I did for class were all video projects. Mm. And I kind of got discovered in one of my lectures, a woman who was married. It's kind of funny. Young people are in college usually aren't married, but this one woman was married to a, um, the head of a video production company. And he ended up hiring me as a production assistant before I was even out of college. So I kind of got that start back then. Oh, wow. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> quite. That, that's wow. Okay. So uh, you started there and then tell me a little bit about your journey of how you ventured out on your own. Okay. So um, the production assistant job led to other jobs in television, networking and meeting other people. Eventually I moved to Hollywood and became a after a production assistant, I was a production coordinator, then a researcher, then a segment producer, then a segment director. I got asked to be in the Directors Guild of America, which was really great. Um, the Directors Guild of America asked um, 12 women to do a volunteer project. We did a documentary called Santa Monica, A Community That Cares. And that documentary won an LA Emmy Award. And that's what I won the Emmy for. And it was a volunteer project. My portion of the video was about the Blind Children's Center. So it was a very cool project. But then after, um, so after um, winning that, I continued on in television for almost 20 years at doing from show to show to show as a, mostly as a director. We call them field directors. Sometimes I would be doing little short stories that rolled into bigger shows. And sometimes I'd do the whole half hour or a whole hour show. It just depended on the show that I ended up on. And it was all, that's all about word of mouth and networking and moving your way to the top. And I ended up as a, senior producer on a, on a dating show called Eliminate, oh, and then, <laughs> and then a, a supervising producer on a show called Your Big Break. And it's funny, both of those shows, basically Your Big Break, it was a precursor to, um, um, what's that show now? The biggest um, American, American Idol. American Idol. Yeah. Yeah. So basically we, yeah, we found um, music stars all over the, and they came on our stage and they dressed up like an act, like a musician like dress up like Rod Stewart and sing a song. But the I guess we missed the boat on that or we, we, we didn't hit the mark completely because I think the dressing up in the outfits was a little bit cheese ball, right? Because American Idol just has you show up on stage. So we were a little before our time, but we didn't get it quite right. Um, and that was a Dick Clark production. It was, I mean, it was an amazing show. It was, I loved every second of it. It lasted, I think, 
two or three seasons. Wow. And then um, Eliminate is basically the same show as The Bachelor. So that show definitely hit the mark. Um, it's um, you'd go on a date with four girls, one boy and four girls, and every every um, commercial, one would be eliminated. And um, basically, um, The Bachelor is the same exact show, but with twenty girls going out with the same guy, or twenty guys going out with the same girl. So wow, yeah. So it's just a little longer form, but basically the same show. Yeah. Wow. And then um, then after after those two shows, I ended up working on um, Doctor Phil. Oh, yeah. And, okay. And the, yeah, and I, I was of a field director at Dr. Phil's show. And then that's when I decided to actually stop and become a mom. And so I left, I finished at Dr. Phil and I left, um, I had one at home and one on the way. And I said, you know what? I think I'm going to take a break. And I was really going to still kind of continue in TV. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I loved being a mom. I stayed at home and I did the whole mom thing. And I, it was hard too, because two little ones and diapers at the same time, I had them really quick back to back. And um yeah, I but I love every minute of it. I have two daughters back to back too. Oh, so you know. And and another one now, a new one now in my 40s, which was, yeah. You got three? I have a third one now, a surprise oh. baby. <laughs> but oh I my goodness, my you're a super back mom. Back, so I know what it takes to have two kids under the age of two. It's not easy. It's yes. So, hard. so yeah. you know. And so I, so I just decided to stay at home, give myself a break. Good. But then I started getting, I started wanting, getting that creative itch again. And so um, it was really funny the way I was getting, I, I started editing people's home videos together, you know, giving them a ta- montages and, um, and doing like bar mitzvah videos and stuff like that, just for people that would ask me, cause they kind of knew I was retired from television and, and I would do that a little bit, but nothing that serious until, um, oh, I did this one thing. I, I created a pilot that this is where, how it, how it got kind of serious. I created a TV pilot or I wanted it to be a pilot. It was, called, it was basically um, Tiger Moms for Tennis. And, um, and I, sing, I did like a one-man band where I went out and shot it and wrote it and edited it. And it was getting a lot of interest. And I, I sent it to the, um, I brought it to the tennis channel and they were interested and they actually gave me a green light. Oh, and okay. The way that, I know, right? And they, I was going to do, I think I was going to do six episodes. But um, the way that the, the tennis channel worked, they told me that I needed to create a, um, a, a corporation because the way that they do it, I would have to get sponsors and I just needed to be incorporated and I needed to have my business ducks in a row. Right. So I incorporated and created the name Klein Creative Media. And then the, that show just went away. The, you know, then that happens, I guess, in Hollywood, things just don't happen. <laughs> yeah. But you got the company. <laughs> but I ended up having Klein Creative Media. And so I didn't really do much with it for a while, but I had this corporation that I was, you know, paying to keep um, right, right. You know, keep the biz- and I'm learning about what you need to do for business by having the corporation. But then, um, then one, this is funny, then my vanity got the best of me. And I went to a plastic surgeon, because I wanted him to fix my C section scar. Wow. So unbeknownst to me, so I go to this, the, the plastic surgeon, and unbeknownst to me, the wife, I mean, I'm sorry, the wife, the nurse at the plastic surgeon's um, office, was one of my clients. I did her um, her daughter's first five year montage video, and so I'm sitting in the chair, getting a you know getting a you know an, a, a quote to fix my C section. I had this really weird thing that happened to my C section. It's another story, but um, the plastic surgeon was doing a a, a a twelve part series about a mommy makeover, and he had put an ad out for all the moms in like the South Bay who wanted to be part of the mommy makeover. And she, the nurse was just bragging about my video work so much that the doctor ended up hiring me to make all 12 of those, st- those segments and put together a half hour show oh for God. his plastic surgery business. So once I did that, I was like, okay, if I can do this and get paid for it, I should probably start doing business videos. Yep. You know, I didn't want to go back to TV. So that's how I, my, that's how I got client creative media. And I started doing it kind of professionally at home in my, um, the third office. And, and then um, in the third bedroom of our, of our home, I made it into an office. And then my two boys started growing up and they didn't want to share um, the bunk beds anymore. Right. <laughs> so they wanted their own room. So they kicked me out of, um, of the other room. And so I got the office that where you, that you see behind me now. And then a year later, I built the studio right next door. Wow. That's incredible. I, I, I <laughs> love how just everything just happened and you took you were ready to take on the chance and do it and then it just actually turned into something that 
nowadays is in so much demand. So many businesses need videos. I feel like the every time I go on the website and I read about us, instead I'm like, I wish there was a video of the owner mm-hmm. talking about what inspired them. Because they can probably, through a video, say so much more and really uh, make that impression in such a stronger way than words could ever, you know, a long three paragraphs explaining what the inspiration behind the business was like it's just so boring so it's you were very futuristic I guess back back <laughs> in your time oh. and now continuing on um so tell me a little bit about you know once you started that project then you realized okay this is this is my sweet spot this is the niche I'm going to focus on mm-hmm. how what were some of the steps that you took to actually start this more seriously I guess what did you have to think about hiring people or did you just you know get the projects and then get people to come and help you on board and kind of work with per project basis and so on well what I did one of the first things I did is I joined the Redondo Beach Chamber of Commerce nice and because I didn't really know how to get business clients and so I I joined the Chamber of Commerce and started meeting people and through the chamber um, I was asked to do be part of something called Leadership Redondo it's a where they um you kind of learn more about your city. You kind of take a deeper dive. But through that um, course, it, I got to know a bunch of other business people a lot deeper. And they, they ended up wanting to hire me. And so through them hiring me, then it started kind of that snowball effect, you know, or word of mouth. Yeah. I mean, not that we're like, you know, completely in demand or like that. It's not like that kind of a snowball, but getting the word out just by other people knowing what we do and knowing the quality of work that we do. And so that started through, I really have to give a lot of credit to the Chamber of Commerce. And then um, after the Chamber of Commerce, um, one of the things I started realizing that other business video production companies were doing is real estate videos. So I started diving into that and I realized that they're not that good unless you have a drone. Mm. I went out and bought a drone, not knowing how to, (laughs) knowing anything about drones and figured out how to fly it, got someone who I knew to teach me. But then I realized there was this little um, um, hiccup. If you wanted to be a, if you wanted to use your drone footage legally on the air, to like on you know on websites and on people's on the MLS and everything, I had to actually have a drone license. But yeah, I know. So they didn't really have a license for drones back then. What they had is you had to get a pilot's license at minimum. You had to be a sport pilot, and then you had to get an exemption from the FAA. So in 2015, I actually became a pilot in the sky on a light sport trike. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Like I never thought I could do it. I was scared of heights. I was terrified to get in the plane. I don't know how I went on this path, but I like, once I start something, I, I just do not quit. And I was just bound and determined to succeed at that. Like why I chose to do a pilot. I mean, you know, it, I could have chose other things, but I did it. And, you know, it's kind of cool. And I actually started falling in love with flying once I, once I really learned what I was doing and got, did my first solo and was having a lot of fun with it. And then um, I got my FAA exemption, everything was going well and I was able to use my footage legally. And then they, the FAA changed and they created a new thing called a part 107. And that's where you can read a book and learn about being a pilot and still fly your drone legally. But you know, I've got a pilot license. I've got a story, a couple stories to tell. So, <laughs> wow. And did that lead to the five girls project that you're? Yes. <laughs> okay. Tell us about that. Well, so now you can kind of see, I have an interest in surfing. I have an interest in, um, yeah, from, from back in school. I've, I've always, I've stayed surfing my whole career. Um, I've never stopped surfing, even, you know, while I have my video production company, it's always kind of been a part of it. Um, and so Last May, I went on a solo surf trip. I needed a break from the kids and the family, and I just needed to get my my surf groove on. So I flew to Costa Rica and um, found a surf spot called Little Hawaii. And here I am out in the surf spot surfing, and I run into somebody from home, a guy named Tracy Maestral. He's a local surfer in Redondo Beach. And I don't really know, I'm not, I wasn't like, I can say I'm like really good friends with Tracy, but I know of his family. His family owns um, Body Glove and um, the Dive and Surf store, and they created the Body Glove wetsuit. And whenever I'm not surfing in ways that are too big, I'm filming waves. 
So I always go and film. And Tracy has numerous times been in videos that I've filmed, you know, and I, that I've put out, you know, on the internet. So Tracy's seen my work, so he knows who I am. He doesn't know me that well, but here I am in Costa Rica in the lineup with Tracy Maestro. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great to see you. So after surfing, he met, meets me in the swimming pool with his girlfriend and introduces me to his girlfriend. And her name is Jenny Phillips. And Jenny started telling me that she's a flight attendant, but that she's kind of done being a flight attendant and she started this process to become a pilot. And I'm like, no, I'm a pilot too. What is, that's amazing. I'm like, you're gonna be a private pilot, right? She's like, no, I'm gonna be a pilot for Delta Airlines. I'm like, what? You're gonna fly like a, like, okay. So I know what it takes to fly a little plane. I'm like, you're yeah. gonna fly. Yeah. And she's like, she said, well, I'm gonna do my best. And she told me about this program that she was applying for and not just her. She and four other flight attendant friends were all applying for this um, program called Delta Propel, where you sign up for the program. And if you get accepted in, you get to train for a period of five years, but you keep your seniority on Delta Airlines. So at Delta Airlines, their hire date stays the same. So by the time, and they're not, they're not getting paid and they're not flight attendants anymore. They're just using their time off, spending their own money to learn how to become pilots. And in five years, Delta has offered them an, um, an interview to become a pilot. And so they're on their own right now for the next five years, doing whatever it takes to get their hours in and get their training in. And they are well on their way. And these women are young and smart and beautiful and inspirational. I just look up to them every time, every time I get to do an interview with them and learn more about them, I'm like blown away by them. I watched the video and we're going to have the video in our show notes as well for our listeners to watch it, but I, I, it was amazing. And I, 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 I did not know that 6.9% of the pilots in the U S are women. That's, I mean, it's a small number. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if I explained it. So I'm, I'm actually doing this. um, I'm calling this a passion project. So it's a documentary. I'm following these five girls for the next five years as they go through this process and I'm funding it all myself so far. And I've done um, a crowd, an Indiegogo. I'm on my second Indiegogo crowdfunding, trying to get, um, you know, just kind of people like you and I who have interest in, um, in aviation to, to help me out with a, you know, a little bit of money here, a little bit there. But my ultimate goal is to have a real sponsor. Like I'm really um, interested. Hopefully Delta decides they want to be part of this. I've kind of met with them. I'm waiting to hear back. Um, it's a slow process, but Delta or some other big company that's really into aviation that wants and into diversity that wants to help mm-hmm. promote women in aviation. And it's it's a really hot topic right now, I'll tell you, um, because there's going to be a pilot shortage in the next oh, in yeah. the next couple of years. And it's a it's a serious thing. There's going to be like 13,000 pilots short to accommodate the regular schedule that America uses right now. So we need to get people in the cockpit, especially and women need to be in, you know, they're underrepresented. They need to be part of that. And I think I I think your video can help inspire women and also let them know that they can. Because I think most women just probably think, oh, it's impossible. You, yes. The pilot I've seen every time I flew somewhere was a guy. Like it, for me, the thought of having a woman pilot isn't even, it hasn't crossed my mind. So in a way, I, I feel like Delta should partner the sponsor you guys because this is a huge movement, a huge yeah. movement. I mean, well, I like- hope so. I hope so. I, I really need to, I need to get them on board. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> and if they don't want to go on board and um, then, you know, we can, I'm sure we'll find other people. Um, I also, um, you know, coming up through television, I have some friends in the television business that I sent the, the pilot, the sizzle reel to as to get their feedback. And one of them's interested in talking about it. Like that he said that their production company might have some interest. Yeah. So the idea is it would be, it would be wonderful to have this documentary in, in film festivals or yeah. ultimately someday to have it on, you know, one of the streaming stations like HBO or Netflix or Hulu. I mean, that would be something I'm striving for and I'm not going to give up because why, you know, I'm going to keep going. We, how can the listeners support you with this? Uh, you mentioned crowdfunding and Indiegogo. Uh, just mention where and how we can go support you. Yeah, if you go to Indiegogo and you go to, um, you just type in the search bar five fly girls, the number five, not not spelled out number, but the number five um, fly girls, you'll see a link to the crowdfunding. And it's actually only up for a few more days right now. So hopefully I'll put another one up after this one. 
um, after this one, they, they, they run for 30 days okay. and then I have to redo it. So um, I'm gonna, what I'm doing is I'm doing a new um, sizzle reel. And once that one's done, I'll probably put a new crowdfunding link up as well. And I'll keep you updated if you'd like. Amazing. Yes, please keep us updated so we can share it with our uh, community uh, so we can support you. This is amazing. Thank now, you. I um, appreciate it. I want to talk a little bit about client creative media and some of the services that you provide. I'm sure a lot of the listeners are uh, either they've started their businesses or they're thinking about starting or they're they're like me where they maybe they have multiple businesses and not enough time to figure things out. Like myself, when it comes to my brand, Roma Leaf, I, I know video, video marketing is the way to go. I know that I need to make more videos, whether it's, um, you know, testimonial videos or just simply talking about the product and the difference and, and how to use it or, you know, bringing in guest speakers and so on. I know all the things I need to do, but when it comes to production, when it comes to video, just everything about it is so complicated where I'm like, okay, you know, I don't I, I know what I need to do, but I don't know where to get started from. And then when I think of hiring someone, I always think of the budget I need to allocate. And I'm just like, oh, not now, maybe later. What right. advice do you have for people like me? Well, okay, so... One of the things that um, I do at Client Creative Media is I also, I have a lot of FAQ videos on. So I do give some advice on do-it-yourselfers. Nice. So if you want to do some yourself, like I actually just recently put out a video that teaches you how to make a really good script. And it doesn't teach you the content to put in it, but the format and how the format makes it so simple to write your script. So um, I provide that for, for clients that, that want to save money and do it themselves. But if they want to take it to that level, that professional level, um, when you, when clients work with me, I give them, um, first I give them, we talk for a while at first and I do a little discovery, but I always give them a handout. It's called the customer journey. So I explain to the customer exactly what the process is for creating a video, because I know a lot of people think that, oh, you just, you know, grab your iPhone and make a video. But when you do it professionally, we have the professional camera, the professional sound, um, we have lighting that, and there's a lot of different elements that um, a non-professional doesn't necessarily think about or even know where to begin to think about. So I take that burden off of them and I educate them, or even if they don't, they don't want, if they want to be lazy and not even get educated, I can actually just take their idea or help give them, I can give them an idea or take their idea and I just spoon feed them everything and I create everything from soup to nuts. So it just depends on how much, um, um, involvement they want with me and if they want to try to balance between budget and professionalism I can kind of find a, a middle ground usually. I love that because I feel like one of the reasons why I did not approach uh, the or consider getting a professional help was not just the budget but it's an ongoing thing. I want to be able to do it on a weekly basis where I have my little spot and I come up with the content and I just do a blurb, talk about something, whatever, and then upload that on YouTube. I don't want to complicate it and I don't want to prolong the process. I want it to be almost like, uh, like an Instagram post, right? But then I think the setup and making sure I'm doing it right, the lighting, all of that, if I can at least help get help with that initial part and then maybe the script writing, well, you know, like how do I put my actual script so that I'm interesting every time, you know, not like a robot getting up and doing the, how do you do this? Which if you go on my YouTube channel with the Roma Leaf YouTube channel, you'll probably see 20 videos of me. The only difference is different outfits and different hairstyle, <laughs> but it's literally me standing in the same position and, and talking about different things related to CBD. And so I, I feel like it's so cheesy. If somebody's watching every video, they're going to know it was done very uh, unprofessionally so personally well, I would need I, I, that help and other things you know but well I, have, well I also have another solution to what you just talked about I offer this really cool thing called video blogs and I what I do ask is, about that yes tell yeah. us about that please I mean it solves it solves the problem that you just that you just brought up so what I do is um is I I have multiples of six or 12 or any multiples you want really but I have you come into the studio one time 
and you record with the professional lighting, professional sound, and you edit all six or all 12. I mean, sorry, you record all six or 12 of your stories in one time. And then I edit them and deliver them back to you one week at a time, one month at a time, however you want them at whatever I pace know. you want them. I'm yeah, and, and I edit them with, with, um, with visuals. I use B-roll and I do graphics and all kinds of stuff. So it looks super high end and you didn't really have to spend that much time. If you have to dedicate one, like two hour window, if you want to do 12 of them, only a one hour window, if you want to do six of them. And I work with you ahead of time to come up with your scripts. You give me bullet points of like what you want to say, like what's the point you're trying to come across. And I will actually create a script for you and put it in our teleprompter. You come in and you record it on the teleprompter. You look great, you sound great. And you walk in, you walk out and they're just delivered to you weekly or monthly as you wish. That's amazing. Oh my God, to include a B-roll, that's huge. Yes. I'm so excited and I, I'm sorry, I, if I'm not mistaken, when I was looking at your, this offer, the prices were under a thousand dollars. Is that correct or was, did I yes. read Yes, something? yes, and, it, and if, you want, if you want, yes. And That's the, amazing. Sure. I think yes. every listener should call you and contact you and take advantage of this right away. This is so- yeah, But, but, it, but, but it's, it's under a thousand for, um, per, per, per segment, per story. Yeah. So depending on, you know, if you get six, you're, you're, they're basically, it's, um, it's seven, I think it's 700 for, I can't remember. I think it's 700 if you do six. I think so. No, if you do, if you do 12 and 750, oh. if you do, if you do, tw if you do, um, if wow. you do six. That's so the more you get, the, the, the more volume that you get, the lower I can bring the price down. Amazing. Because yeah, because the main cost really us is for the, the studio and the time of the studio and getting that recording of the main body of it correct. Okay. Oh and my God, yeah. that's, that's a huge problem solver right there. That's huge. I think so many businesses should be, should know about this and, and uh, take advantage. I am. Yeah, it's definitely way to go. <laughs> I'm going to watch the video. Yeah, I'm going to. Tell me a little bit about your books. Um, both of them actually, Women in Business Leading the Way, as well as Women in Business, The Journey, A Surfer and a Pilot. Tell me what inspired you to write those books. Okay, I'll show you, I'll only show you them. Oh, oh, I love <laughs> shoe covers. You know, I'm a shoe freak. <laughs> I love that. Okay. So, um, um, so basically I was, um, I became a certified women-owned business about in 2019, like right before, as it, I think it was, yeah, unfortunately, right before COVID really took full force, unfortunately. It's a very exciting process to become a certified small women-owned business. Are very you challenging. I just got my certification four months ago. It was a pretty, so excited to have it. I'm so honored. Oh, I'm so but, glad you're part of it. But yes. it was difficult. I mean, the amount of things they needed it was not a joke and the interview process and vet all of it. Yes. Yay, I'm so yeah. Happy. So I'm congratulations. I'm so glad you're part of it. But um, so through that organization, there was a, um, a publishing house that wanted to do a story. She wanted to do a collaborative book. So I'm, I'm not, I'm only one out of 14 other authors. Wow. We each wrote, a, we each wrote a chapter and it's all about our business experience and they're all certified women owned businesses. And we're from all over the country in different, um with different careers and um and the publisher she's there's actually a third book that's coming out i'm not in the third book i was just in the first and the second one but um it's a it's a really great idea to um and then through that through um through the book i got to know the other business um owners and i've done i've done videos for some of them and i've done videos to promote the book so it's been a really great opportunity to help you know promote my career as well by having a book it's just amazing how there's just this domino effect. Every door you open opens up to more doors and more yes. doors, and more doors. Like we, you know, I invited you to do the show, and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, she's she's got the the you know buy the vlogs opportunity. Maybe I should consider that. So already I was <laughs> thinking of um, some of the problems that I have that you can help me solve. But hopefully the listeners can feel the same way. Now, um, for for women specifically since we're both women certified business owners oh my god I'm so excited about that what advice do you um would you give them in terms of 
juggling family kids and motherhood is hard it's not easy and I mm-hmm. you know it looks like you you're like me you prioritize being a mother as we should and and then juggling our businesses which also to me my my companies are like my little babies I you know you start them from scratch all by yourself you pay so much attention to them and then as they grow you're able to hire more people and so on my question Uh, for you I have two questions actually the first one is when people are starting out what advice would you give them to be able to keep some sanity up here in their head (laughs) because it it can get overwhelming and and sometimes um, messy and then the second question is as you're getting bigger and hiring and so on you know what are some of the challenges and opportunities I guess at the same time that people face as they're scaling their business Okay. So the first one, um, the advice I give about is, um, I always like, when I leave the office, I really try to leave the office and I really like I'm separate work from home. And it it was, it was harder to do when I worked at home. And I know with COVID, a lot of people are working at home, but, um, if you can have an office, I love having my own space, having my own office. This is my creative like domain and I can I can be creative here and it's comfortable here and I don't have to worry about distractions of the kids. And um, so that would, I think I, the, the best advice I would say is if you can have your own office, try to do that and, and leave, the, leave work behind. Although I'm a creative type. So if I've got a client and I'm working on a big project, like I'll, I'll be laying in bed at night and all of a sudden I'll think about their project and how I want to write their script. Yeah. And I'll have to like have a pad at the, next yeah. to my bed. And I do, and that's how I keep it out of my head. I get a pad immediately and I write down my ideas because once I write them down, I can go to sleep comfortably and I sleep real well. But if I don't write them down, I'm like, I hope I, I, hope I remember that in the morning because this is a brilliant idea. This is how I have to, you know, produce their show. Wow. So that was part one. Now, part two, you said as you're scaling, as right? You're scaling as you're getting, let's say you you're getting more clients. With obviously, with that, you're going to need more help and and yes. How, how do you how do you get through the growth stage also of the well it's, it's interesting I I started I was about I was going through the growth stage and then COVID hit and then yeah. I had to go through I had to ungrow mm-hmm. so I don't think that I have the best advice to share with that on growing I know that you need one at least one right hand to be your right hand and be there for you and understand everything about your business and find somebody that you can trust and who's committed to you the same way that you're committed. And right now I've got a great person. Her name's Cassandra. Cassandra, can't believe I said that. Sorry, Cassandra. (laughs) Her name's Cassandra and she's amazing. And she she understands me because I have a quirky personality. So she gets me and she tolerates me and um, she's committed. And um, and she knows that as soon as I grow that she's gonna grow with me. And she has patience and that's kind of what you (laughs) need, you know? And she likes what she's doing. So I'm lucky about that. I like that. You know, I didn't take that approach until I'm going to say seven, eight months ago when I was pregnant and things were just kind of crazy running two companies at the same time. I felt like stuff was falling through the cracks, being pregnant on top of it was difficult. And for the first time in my life, I said, okay, I'm going to hire someone who can help me with both businesses because all this time I kept the two separate and they are separate. They're very separate. When I hired her, I said, I don't, I don't like the word assistant. I really don't, Mm -hmm. but you kind of are going to be that in that position, helping me with whatever it takes, Mm -hmm. whichever company at whichever minute. Cause I, it's really hard for me to separate the two. Although I try on my calendar to allocate certain hours or even days to one business and then the other things pop up all the time. You know, it's just, it's really hard to put this like military schedule on and expect everyone to follow. And so I think it was life-changing for me to hire her and, and set proper expectations from the beginning that you're going to be thrown into everything as needed basis. And I need help to make sure that I just don't drop the ball on anything that's important or time sensitive. And uh, it's been helping me a lot. Although sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, I, it's, it, it gets, she gets overwhelmed too. So then I have to pause and reorganize and, and, 
prioritize, but, you know, she keeps me accountable. And that's usually, I think, something that a lot of entrepreneurs don't think they need it, but we need it probably more than anyone else. We need it. And it's so funny, like Cassandra, even before, even before our meeting today, she's like, Marcy, you need to be on in five minutes. Yep. Like even before 30 minutes before, she's like, you have, you have an interview in 30 minutes. And then yep. five minutes before, she's like, you got five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> she it's keeps like, me on my toes. She's great. Same with mine, Christine. She She's amazing. And she is the type where she'll, she'll like, and I asked her to do it. I said, please, like, I get distracted easily. I'll go in to check something. And then next thing you know, I'm like literally answering four emails and I should be getting on a Zoom call, you know? So uh, it's amazing. But, you know, I think it takes a certain personality to be an entrepreneur and we clearly have that. And it does come with the challenges of being an entrepreneur, although it's amazing. And we're, I think we're, we're able to juggle so much and multitask, which is, which is necessary to be an entrepreneur, but at the same time, it's not easy to stay on one project that the, the whole time and finish that and then start the other. If you were to, um, if you were to share with the listeners who have their small businesses and, and, and talk to them about video marketing, what would you share with them? What would you advise them to do in terms of marketing and focusing on video? Because I'll tell you, I'm a marketer myself. I have a marketing agency and video marketing is the future. They should, in my opinion, every business should have a video uh, uh, on their about us page. It should be a video of them talking about their business, what inspired them and how they're making a difference, as well as, you know, little snippets of little short videos of how to do certain things, depending on their business service product, whatever. But it's just, it's so much more engaging and, and, and easier. And most people don't have the patience that they used to, to read long blogs or right or anything. So what's your thought in, t- in terms of the future of marketing and how video marketing is connected to that? Yeah, I mean, I really feel like every business should have some sort of introductory video on their website because you want to... The only reason I think people do business with me or with you or with anybody is because they want to do business with that, with us as the person, you know, and there's a connection. If they connect with you and they, they like your vibe or they kind of like don't connect with you. And that's a really great way to weed out because you don't want clients. You want clients that connect with you. And if they don't connect with you, that's okay too. At least, you know, because you're going to save yourself some headaches along the road because it's a relationship when you start working together. So do you like, do we have the same, um, can we, can I, can we see each other's vision? Are we able to communicate well together? You know, that kind of thing. And I think when someone sees a video of the person that they hear them talking and they see what they look like, they get a feel. It's almost like when you watch television and you see a celebrity, you, certain celebrities, you like certain ones you don't, right? You go to a, you know, Julie Roberts movie because you like her. Um, So if someone's watching you on video, they're like, oh Yeah. You know, I, I, the, there's a service that I want and I might want to work with that lady yeah. or that man or whoever. So seeing them, I think is, I, is and, he, and hearing the way that they speak and about their business yeah. and the honesty about them, it starts building up trust even before you, they've ever met you. And when you meet, you shake hands for the first time, you feel like you've already met them before. Yeah. It's agree. a good feeling. And I, and I think certain businesses more than ever, like for example, the CBD industry, when I was just a consumer and I was trying to find the the most, the the purest CBD that was potent and consistent, the brand that I could use for my personal use. My issue was that I was coming across brands where I could not learn or read or find anything about the founder. And that scared me. That really made me not trust the brand because like, well, why are they hiding? How do I know who's behind this? What if it's just another Chinese big company that's making artificial synthetic CBD and putting a label on and I have no idea of knowing it. And so when when I started Roma Leaf, my one of the promises that I made to myself was that if I'm going to sell this to the consumer, I'm going to make sure my face is behind it and my story is told as to why I started the brand and, and I want people to trust it because I'm literally every batch I make, I take it daily. I take a bottle from that batch and take it daily. So I'm not going to make anything that is not the highest quality. 
And so I constantly want to reassure people that, but, but again, I'm busy with the day to day and running operations and so on. I don't make enough videos to, to, to send that message through on a constant basis, which I wish I could. And so I'm super thrilled that I can come to uh, client creative media and get my, my problems <laughs> with getting my message across uh, quickly solved. But again, if you can remind our listeners how they can get a hold of you and take advantage of some of the um, amazing services that you offer, as well as where they could go to sponsor sponsor the five fly girls on the documentary on in, in Indiegogo. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, yeah, um, I can be reached online at climbcreativemedia.com. And if you have any wonders about how you spell Klein. It's, it's the same as Calvin Klein underwear. So it's K-L-E-I-N creativemedia.com. And I'll even throw out my phone number 310-990-4120 because I do take phone calls and texts and um, happy to be happy to answer anybody's questions. And, but can I, can I do a plug for, yes, for your please. CD? Oh, actually, <laughs> Oh, uh, no, we'll, not we'll yet. do that in a minute. We'll do that okay. in a minute. But I just want to make sure that the listeners know that all this information is going to be in our show notes so that um, they can connect with you. And I highly recommend everybody. I mean, coming from a marketing perspective, it, it, video is the way to go. And I think everybody needs to start making videos, whether it's introductory videos or just simple 10, 15 second quick videos, just two videos. And I love how you made these packages for us to take advantage of. You're not, you're simplifying it because I think yes. what's been challenging for a lot of entrepreneurs out there, small business owners specifically, is that, you know, they think of a huge production and the huge budgets and they get scared and they're like, nope, no, not the time for it, but you made it available you know, $700 is something that almost everybody should be able to afford and should budget that out and do it. So thank you so much. I appreciate okay. you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing everything. Um, and God, all the inspiring work you're doing. I hope you inspire other women to become pilots, but also get into the video production industry like you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh,